What we're going to look at right now is the E2 elimination of water from a primary alcohol. Um, this is going to be drawn. I'm going to draw it like this for this purpose. Um, and you are going to again be using an oxy acid. And it needs to be concentrated. So I'm just going to heat it up. The reason it needs to be concentrated is one of the products from this reaction is water. And this is one of these reactions that operates under Le Chatelier's principle because the equilibrium is close to one. So to force it towards the products, we want to make sure there isn't any water present initially in the reaction. So what happens in this particular reaction is again you are dealing with a strong acid. And again, you can look up the pKa of sulfuric acid on your pKa table. It's got a very negative number. So it's quite strong, and it acts as a proton donor. You can use either one of these OH bonds, and when that bond breaks, oxygen gets both of the electrons because oxygen is more electronegative. Well, somebody's got to take the proton, and it has to be a electron pair donor that is capable of accepting a proton. The only atom that is capable of that is the oxygen here. So you're going to make an oxy acid as a result of this. And as I've shown with the E1 elimination, you have, you're also going to make HSO4 minus, and I'm not going to bother this time to draw all of the resonance structures, but HSO4 minus or other conjugate bases from other oxy acids would have resonance stabilization of the negative charge. And because they are resonance stabilized, they're pathetic nucleophiles. They will not act as an electron pair donor to the substrate that we have now created. So it's going to be a spectator for the rest of the reaction. Now, if you look back at the uh, alkyl oxonium ion, the oxygen is not happy. It has a formal charge of plus one. To get rid of this formal charge, you've got one of two options. You can break an OH bond, which means you go backwards in this reaction and you revert to the alcohol. It's absolutely possible. It does happen, but it's not productive chemistry. The only other option you've got is to break the carbon-oxygen bond. The problem with that in this particular case is this is a primary carbon the oxygen is attached to. And we don't make primary carbocations ever. You do not do this. And so something else has got to happen to make this reaction work. And that's what we're going to do with this E2 elimination. I am going to take the time to draw in the hydrogens on this primary carbon. What I have seen over the years is that students try to remove one of these two hydrogens that I've just drawn in and kick out the oxygen. You, you can't do that. Where would you make the double bond? You can't make a double bond to the same carbon that you already are. So you have to remove a hydrogen from one of these adjacent carbon atoms. And when this occurs, the hydrogens and the carbon-oxygen bond that you're literally breaking do need to be anticoplanar. I'm not going to show that in this mechanism, but I am going to state that because it's very important. I've shown it in class with models, and you do need to show that they occur anticoplanar when this elimination does occur. And that's so that the two p orbitals on these adjacent carbon atoms are in the same plane, and the double bond actually is formed. To do this removal of a hydrogen atom, since we can't form the carbon, uh, carbocation, you can use this HSO4- minus or water. And water is much more likely to do the trick, since you would make a weaker acid-base pair. And there's a lot more water in solution. But I'm going to have water acting as my base to remove one of these two hydrogens on the adjacent carbon. As that occurs, the carbon-hydrogen bond breaks, and that pair of electrons will come in and make a double bond. A carbon can't have five bonds, so at that point in time, the carbon-oxygen bond breaks, and oxygen takes those electrons. This is an all-in-one step. It's called a concerted reaction. And when you are done, you will have a double bond. 
between these two carbon. Oops, that wasn't supposed to be a carbon. That's supposed to be a hydrogen. I am sorry. You'll have a double bond between the two carbons. Okay. So in this case, I'm making a monosubstituted alkene. I will also have made H3O plus and HSO4 minus, which are spectators. Again, if you give the proton back to the HSO4 minus, that regenerates the acid catalyst, and we have water as a product. So to drive this reaction toward products, make sure you start off with concentrated sulfuric acid so that it can go in this direction.